Welcome to Alter Audio. This is Blitz. I'm bringing you everything that you guys probably don't want to hear, but we're giving it to you anyway. Thank you for hitting play. The voice for the counterculture. Or maybe a voice against it. I don't know. Are we technically part of counterculture or are we a counter to the counterculture? Maybe we're just another influence like everyone else. <laughs> we are from a parallel dimension somewhere where we actually make sense, but you know what? Somehow we're bringing some form of reality to you. That's parallel if you guys want to Google it. 2000. Year 11. Year 11. What's the actual, uh, you know, you know, the Chinese year? I don't know. I, I don't know. No, I have no idea. You're the dragon, you're the ghost, you're the pig, you're the black children. I don't know. Well, te well, technically, we haven't got there yet. New Year's ain't for a while. <laughs> Isn't it? Mm -hmm. In February or March? When is Chinese New Year? I don't know, I'm gonna ask When do dragons chase their tails with many feet above people underneath where firecrackers go off in the street, lanterns hang from the window. Now, is the proper term Chinatown? Or should it be called Asian Town? It could be Asian Town. Yeah. I mean, is uh, there some political correctness to it? Is there a majority of Chinese people within the Chinatown called, you know, uh, part of town for it to be called the Chinatown? Is there like a Korea town? The thing is, is there a, a Vietnam town? Vietnamese town? Or that's Japanese that's, town? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it's, it's the majority, the majority ain't really, you know, the Asia, the Asia related. Now, now if it was a Japan part of town, would it be a Because Japan was an island. It is an island. Like, it hasn't disappeared. It still exists. It still exists right now. You still buy a plane stick, I think. I think. No, Japanese island? Or is it Japanese part of town? Which is an island? Or part of town? I doubt it, though. I doubt it. Maybe like the city life. Does that mean they had bomb testing on the, the Japanese part of town? Yes, I don't think so. I don't think I was out there. Or maybe the, the parts of town that they call like Hiroshima Ten and uh, Nagasaki Ten, you know, probably have like, you know, they're bad parts of town. They're all fucked up, you know. So they have the shitty parts of Japan and Japan as well. You know? I don't think it's that big though. Maybe it's not that big. It's probably the world section, you know? It's not the whole cupcake, it might be just... And one. so we stray it again. Drink of the moment! The drink of the moment! St. Arnold's Christmas Ale. Yes it is, yes it is. The drink of the moment brought you by St. Arnold's Christmas... Christmas Ale. I had too many of these. I only have one. Too many for Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to tell me a little bit about the St. Arnold's Christmas Ale? Because I am so... I don't you know what? St. Arnold's is a nice little brewery. Okay, we'll talk about the Christmas Ale. Christmas Ale right it's now is on its way out. It's been a few more times now, but St. Reynolds Christmas Ale right here is swirling out from the library. Okay, as the Bishop of Myth, by the way, St. Reynolds spent his life warring his banking and drinking water and extolling the virtue of it. During his funeral, his pallbearer stopped to slake their thirst, but regretfully, there was just one mug of ale to share in life. In America, in the past. That one mug never ran dry. And all of the thirsty mourners in the entire gathering were satisfied. Saint Arnold, patron saint of Louis. Look in the food. You look a little thirsty there. Hold that bottle. Sit the tail. Give me that bottle back. Damn it. Give me it. No, no, no. Let no, it no, go. Let no, it no, go. No. Just a thing. We're not gonna yeah, fight. Absolutely. We're not gonna fight you this time. I'm not gonna do that. Okay. I'll refuse. Right. I'm gonna be the stabby today. I will have to. I will. We had a, a mental stab there for a while. We, we had did. a whole mental stab conversation for a while. Yeah, we did. We did. We finally, uh, the day it finally came, ladies and gentlemen, Brian stabbed me. I stabbed him mentally. You hear him talk about it uh, weeks in, weeks out. You know, you hear it every day. It's a catchphrase. It's, it's, it's a t shirt he physically wears sometimes. So now it's time for a little thing I like to call Real Review. Real Review. Brian, uh, I hear you had a movie experience with me. You want to tell me about that? Yeah, I actually went to uh, Star Sunny Grill right there in Cooley Nation. It's two stars of movie one. And uh, I'm excited to see a movie that I've been waiting for for a little bit. It's True Grit. True Grit. Originally a remake of an old John Wayne film based on, on a book as well, but it's done by the Coen brothers. Now, here's what I have to say about True Grit. True Grit pretty much creates a bigger world and creates a you know, better understanding of characters. 
and you almost want there to be more, you know, because it's almost like they're folding these different, you know, things into the storyline, and then when you finally get to the end and it's done and spoken for, you realize, you know what, they accomplished everything they set up to do before the film and the storyline, but they leave you wanting. You want to know more about the girl's life. You want to know more about what happened to Jeff Bridges' character, you know, before, you know, he became this old ragged, you know, U.S. Marshal. At the same time, like, where is, uh, you know, Matt Damon's character going in the future? The Texas Ranger, where did he come from? These great adventures that he's talking about. And where actually does this girl end up later on in her life? So they kind of, kind of, they kind of leave you wanting more. They want to make it you... leaves you wanting more. You, got you know, it. it's only, I believe, like a little over an hour and a half and stuff like that. And it really... You know, I, they probably could have done a lot more. It took a two hour film, and I, I probably would have seen a two and a half to three hour film, and they probably still couldn't add everything in the film that I would have So, I mean, like, you know, to me, like, they added that Cohen Brothers dialogue in there. That's what kind of built me. What's funny is, like, you know, they have a small scene with, like, Jack Rowan's character, which is the, the bad guy in the freaking movie. And well, he goes by different names. That's the whole thing. Oh, they had different aliases? Yeah, he had different aliases. That's why Matt Damon's character kind of comes into the storyline. Matt Damon's character is Texas Ranger. The yeah, and he's been hunting, hunting him down for, for a while under a different name. He's wanting to bring the justice in Texas while the girl wants for him to suffer for the death of her father. And throughout this whole storyline, like I said, everything they build up, they they they, they, they follow through perfectly. You know? So you, you just got really attached to all these characters and all these all the stories. Exactly. To me, I want, like I said, I want a True Grit Volume 2. So what kind of rating do you give uh, True Grit? Mm-hmm. Rating on True Grit, let's see. Three A pluses. Be well, uh, I also watched a movie today, an old school movie actually. Uh, I was at home mm-hmm. on the Netflix. And now he's watching Netflix. What does he do? He goes to a nice little search. Or actually, what was your movie? Why don't you tell the story? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can tell the story now? Yes, you can tell the story of your own life. Right, right. So, yeah, so I'm sitting at home. I uh, put the movie on my Instagram queue because I really want to see it. I uh, took the other day, right before my birthday. Hook starring Robin Williams. Blue was released. 1991. Uh, Hook came out. Dude, that's freaking. That is almost 20 freaking years ago. 20 years ago. 1991. Dude, it was. I was seven years old. It was. It's December 11th of December 1991 when we dropped in the U.S. 1991. I was uh. I was sh- I was there shitting there. I was still pissing my bed. Actually, I was pissing my bed. Yeah, I was in my bed and I probably remember about pissing my bed till I was 10. I was about to say. I was like, I was like, you have all your like, whole other decade in this business. Yeah. I'd probably yeah. say more around 16. Yeah. Beautiful living from the wonderful Dewey Roberts who plays Barry. That, that, like, I just, like, just watching Tinkerbell doing her thing. Dewey like, Roberts does have beautiful legs. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, beautiful legs, Julia Roberts, that's Tinkerbell. They kind of, kind of gave me like a mini bone. Moving on, Robin That's Williams. What they call it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the interesting thing was? Peter, Peter Pan. In the beginning of the movie, he's a high business. Douche. Man. Yeah, he's a douche in the beginning of the movie. Peter Pan becomes. A, what happens when he takes a boy out of Peter Pan? Peter Pan becomes a douchebag. Oh yeah. But uh, what we find out really early is that he has a cell phone. In the very opening of the movie, when uh, she's uh, and it's a brick. Oh yeah, it's a big brick. It is a big brick, you know? Like, our digital cameras are... are oh, it's a fucking brick. It's a brick. It's not an 80s brick, but it's a brick. And you remember those... clamshell freaking uh, cell phones? Remember clamshell? Yeah. Clamshells are big. Okay, not the, not the like the big clam, like the small clamshells that we had like, later on then. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, look at my... No. Yeah, no. I'm talking like... Uh, it wasn't amazing. I mean, check, I mean, check it out. Pit, 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 pit. <laughs> I had a little dingle sword, man, that you get whenever you buy it from, uh, from one of the toys that has a like, plastic sword that has a little fake coconut as the hand is the is the hand guard and like little plastic pieces of piece of wood. Yeah, and, cool. and then it, it basically had a little bell on the inside. So anytime time you like sling the sword, it would go bing and got a real bell. Oh. So it sounded like a ching of like real metal and metal. <laughs> and that real metal metal fill sound, you know, like ching, 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 ching. Ching, and later on. Ching, ching. But I was thinking like I was chopping everything. The wall. Ching, ching. I was hitting everything. Yeah, you're right. My mom pretty much hit the store half the time. I have to go find it. And then I go play outside. <laughs> I'm just be sitting there on the ground. 
Keep the sword guy. <laughs> I have, I uh, will look, I think I know I'm doing my Halloween this year, let me just say that. Today you're going to be doing my here, Halloween here, here, here. I don't want to see you thing. I don't care how pretty your legs are. It's going <laughs> to happen. It's going to happen. But I, I, I feel really good about my body. 